Hello guys, in this session we're going to be talking about life cycle events. So you have, you can see a lot of life cycle events here like joiner, lever, right? And manager transfer. So whenever a new person joins, we can use the life cycle event called as the joiner, right? Uh, it's very much useful because you will see in most of the conf uh, org companies, the, there will be something called a joiner. Just, let's just click on that thing, joiner. Uh, let's see what we can find. So you see here the name and see here what is important process a new employee. I told you right when someone is joining in an organization then this is the default lifecycle event that will be kicked off and you can see the event type. So that is very important because uh, for a uh, new thing it will be basically create. Let's just click it. So you can see here manager transfer attribute uh, attribute change rule native change right so when you're creating a joiner workflow a joiner is nothing but let's say a particular user is joining an organization normally you should always use the event type as create right so it creates the particular user in the system and what is more important it important is it provides the access to that particular user on the uh, different things that are configured right and you can see there is something called as disable now when you, if this disabled is enabled if you tick marked it what will happen is this lifecycle events will not run right it will easily understand that this user is already present let's say you have already joined it joined a company this will this is disabled will be i mean disabled will be enabled but if a person is new then this should not be used so be careful guys because when you see that lifecycle events are not running just always come and check if this particular disabled option is checked or not if it is checked then this is not gonna run right so be careful on that particular side so you can see this there's also included identities right so let's say if you want to filter particular identities let's say um, there are particular users uh, if you see the drop down you can see there are different types of filters for this so you can see the match list if you click on match list it will show you what are all the identity attributed attributes uh, that you want to filter it out right so if you want don't want to create a user uh, let's say if i don't want to create a user who doesn't want uh, i don't want to allow a contract employee in this particular application so i can select accordingly just select the attribute name and particular value and then that will work just select the attribute then just say the employee or email or any any type of value okay it should uh, like employee type and other stuff you can select right so when you create this particular employee type anyway this is uh, we uh, we just want to i just want to brief on that particular life cycle events so let's uh, go ahead on that so anyway whatever the filter you're going to put uh, in the included identities either you can write a rule or you can write a script i will just be showing you that today write rule or the script you will see pretty much both are the same uh, just click on the script on the drop down in the included identities the after disabled if i go yeah script yeah that's what i'm talking about so you can see here so uh, you see nothing is there it's completely pretty much blank there is no argument nothing it pretty much it's completely blank so whatever you want to write whatever code you want to write you can just go over and hit it write it over here right so if it's a particular two three four five seven eight line then you can always go with the script if it's complicated let's say a uh, lot of thing lot of stuff if it's there then that's the rule so which one should I go for normally should I go for a script or a rule normally you should go for a rule why because rule is reusable because uh, it's kind of let's say if I have multiple things that I want to develop multiple business processes then I can use reuse that particular rule in different uh, things but if I write something let's say script that's not reusable that's the problem so you can see other type of stuff that are there and then finally you see the business process right when you scroll down so you see the life cycle event joiner which we already discussed uh, which we have already discussed and you can see all the default business processes 
guys business process is nothing but it's a workflow which uh, normally you are supposed to write the workflow but sale point comes with some default uh, business processes right so you can see here the joiner the lever and uh, manager approval for all the native changes manager transfer reinstate so a lot of stuff you can see here so you will see a lot of things especially the joiner and the lever is very much useful right so that's it guys for uh, this particular session um yeah thank you very much